Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for opening. It's another day. Um, if you're meeting me for the first time, my name is Ryan Tumanima. I'm a medical student studying medical radiography in my third year, I'm based in Nigeria. And um, apart from my medical studies, I'm also a top rated medical content writer. And um, I do a lot of writings, uh, medical articles, blog contents, you know, um, I write about patient care materials, educational medical materials. Um, I'm also open for branding, influencing as well. So if you need a brand, brand influence, you can as well reach out to me. So today I have an amazing guest speaker, Sandra, all the way from Germany. Hey, Sandra, could you introduce yourself? Hi, Ransom. Thanks so much for having me today. It's great to join you. Hi, everyone. I, my name is Sandra Toogood. I'm a freelance medical writer, just like Ransom. I'm also a pharmacist and I'm an artist as well. And I got into um, medical writing when I moved to Germany because I was looking for something that I could do here without being registered here as a pharmacist. And that's when I discovered medical writing. Mm, mm. Amazing. So you, you're ready for these questions we have for you, Sandra, for the audience? Yes, I'm ready. So even looking downwards, I'm reading the questions to Sandra, all right? So you will be saying what Ryan's been looking downwards for. So the first question goes this way. How did you get started as a freelance medical content writer? and also a pharmacist and also a teacher and with a focus on medical health support. So tell us. So when I finished school, the um, degree that I studied was pharmacy. So that's uh, where I first got into that. I always knew I wanted to do something in the field of uh, helping other people and healthcare. So I studied pharmacy and I, I actually um, – I'm originally from South Africa, so I studied there, worked in South Africa and um, also in England for many years as a, as a clinical pharmacist. And then um, about eight years ago, I moved to Germany and um, not straight away, but after a little bit of time, um, I wanted to work here using my pharmacy background. And um, due to the language barrier, I kept couldn't speak fluent German, then I um, discovered that I could work as a medical writer using my pharmacy experience and background. So initially, I worked uh, just as a general medical writer, and I still do uh, general, um, very different therapeutic areas. But I decided to specialize in mental health, because it's something that I'm uh, interested and passionate about. And I also worked for some of my pharmacy years in mental health pharmacy. Hmm. Wow, that was amazing transition. Um, so are, are you learning German, right, German language right now? Yeah, I did, I did lessons in German for the first few years. And then I, at, the, at the time, I just had so much on my plate. So I, um, I stopped the lessons. And now I've just learned over the years, um, I, I, I am by no means fluent, but I feel like uh, I know enough to, to get by. And it's still one of my goals is to become more fluent in German. Absolutely. Because I, I know that Germany, you know, if you don't know how to speak the language, there are a lot of barriers that and there are a lot of crossroads that you're not going to pass through because you don't know their language. So it's amazing that you're learning the language. So thank you so much for sharing how you got started, you know, as a pharmacist and also as a freelance medical content writer. And your transition from South Africa to England to Germany, these are an amazing transition. Thank you so much for sharing that. So the second question goes this way. Hmm. Are you ready? Yeah. What inspired you to improve your mental health by combining your expertise in pharmacy with your passion for visual arts? So tell us. Okay, so when I started getting into arts, which was just before leaving South Africa, actually, 
um, I found that it really, um, when I got into the zone of my painting, it really sort of improved how I felt. Like if I was going through difficult challenges at the time, it really, um, I could sort of zone in on my art and forget about other things. And uh, I really felt that it, it helped. And then so years down the line, when I decided to specialize in um, mental health due to my own interest, um, and also previous expertise, I, I sort of saw how I could link the two um, as an artist and a mental health writer, because I'm sure you're aware that um, all the arts, whether it's visual arts, uh, music, dance, they have been proven by research to um, improve one's mental health and overall well-being. So, so this is what inspired me to go down this path, because I had the arts that I enjoy doing and um, the mental health writing and interest. And I've sort of somehow trying to link the two and talk about how the arts can, can help people with their mental health. Yeah, I love the fact that you talked about music. You know, music can help to mm -hmm. decrease stress, you know, because there, there are music that I listen to, you know, even stressed out or burned out or, you know, not at my utmost level. This kind of music tries to reduce such things. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Yeah. Pleasure. So the, the, the third question is, wait, before I ask this third question, I want to ask you a question. In pharmacy as a mm -hmm. course, Mm -hmm. Does he have a specialization in mental health? Or did you just, after uh, studying pharmacy, you just decided to focus on mental health? So during the course uh, of my degree, um, no, there wasn't an area specifically on mental health, although we did cover lots of different uh, medication types and, and medications used in certain mental health illnesses were covered. But when I was working in hospital pharmacy, for some time, I worked in the mental health um, department. So I was um, dealing with um, all medications to do with mental health, seeing patients with different mental health conditions from depression, um, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, many different types. Um, so yeah, as, as a pharmacist working in a clinical environment, there's um, definitely a an opportunity to specialize in mental health. Hmm. Yeah, there is there is a, a, a kind of like a, a little difference between pharmacy and mental health, you know, but uh, but the working hands, because like you said, you talked about working in the community and that mm -hmm. community you talked about has some a lot of mental health, you know, issues that you all need to fight for. And that's amazing that you focused on mental health. Thank you so much for sharing that. So that draws me back to the third question. Can you share some examples of how your artwork benefits people with mental health issues? Yeah, well, um, artwork, not just mine, but any artwork, uh, people who view artwork it has been shown that stress levels reduce, um, certain neurotransmitters in the brain are released, which make you feel better, such as dopamine and serotonin. So in viewing art, uh, this can improve your mental health. Even better is to actually engage in doing art yourself. So in the past, I've also run workshops uh, where people can come and um, have a go at painting. You don't have to be uh, any sort of an expert. You have to, don't have to have any exper uh, experience, but just the process of um, performing the art uh, has been shown to um, reduce stress levels and improve your overall well-being. So I've had feedback from clients that have come for workshops that uh, how much they enjoyed it from that perspective and how much it's helped them. Okay, so um, amazing explanation. Thank you so much. But I'm, I'm kind of like curious. You know, we, we medical students are really curious at some things, you know. So I'm really curious right now. Yeah, I would Do like to add, oh, sorry, Ransom, for interrupting. I would just like to add that 
I'm in no way advocating um, this instead of traditional therapy. If somebody's on medication for a mental health condition, this would be um, if you want to experiment with getting involved in art or drama or music, this would be like an, an add in to your therapy that your doctor has prescribed. So it's, it's just extra things such as exercise that helps, um, good nutrition, having a good support structure. All these things help alongside with uh, therapy if somebody has been prescribed that. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you so much for putting that out there. So that I'm still curious about the question where I ask you. Um, I, was, I was so curious about at works helping many with the mental health issues. I was so curious about that. So what kind of artworks, could you just mention at least one kind of like artworks that can help someone out there, you know, your own narratives mm -hmm. to help fight, you know, people with mental health issues? Um, a type of art, you mean? A type of, um, so, so the arts don't just include visual arts, as you know. They include um, singing, drama. Um, it could even be creative writing. It could be um, gardening because that's something creative. It could be um, uh, filmmaking. Anything in the in the creative sort of arts field that a person is interested in that they would choose to maybe take up as a hobby can help. Um, improve somebody's mental health because it's been shown that certain um so the brain like improves by by generating new neural pathways um to help you feel better and as i mentioned before uh, the release of neurotransmitters which which uh benefit a person of how they feel so artworks as in visual arts, yes, that's the area that I am into, but many other artworks, even, even um, knitting, um, things like that can help somebody. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does, it does. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I'm a big, you know, I'm not curious again. Thank you so much for sharing that. <laughs> Okay, so um, that draws me to the fourth question. Mm -hmm. What misconceptions do you encounter about your mental health as a freelance medical content writer? I guess some people might assume that because I'm, uh, I'm the medical writer specializing in mental health that I know everything and that I'm in a position where I'm just teaching others what to do and and not experiencing the same issues myself but that's not the case because i'm also uh like everyone in humanity struggle struggles at times with their mental health I'm, I'm just like everybody else so there's also times when i know i should um get outside and go for a run to help me feel better but i don't do it because um it's just difficult to do so so I also struggle with the same challenges that everyone else does. That uh, could be a misconception where people think that as an expert, you have it all under control, but that's not the case. Mm, mm, mm. So then how do you deal with, because as a writer, there are other negative threats that comes in as a writer. So how do you deal with negative threats through writing? Well, um, so writing, uh, especially more creative writing, can be one of the things that helps a person get their thoughts out, helps them feel better. But the type of writing I do, which is kind of more fact-based, I feel is, um, is not the type uh, the same as creative writing. But, but with, with writing, and, and I'm sure many medical health, uh, medical writers out there can identify with certain issues such as imposter syndrome where you feel that you, um, I'm sure you, you've had this before, where you feel, um, uh, who am I to, to uh, do this job? Um, I'm not good enough. I'm not um, qualified enough. But, but this is something you have to 
overcome and I find um, connecting with other freelancers and other medical writers, um, mostly online, finding out that other people are going through the same issues, that really helps um, to realize that, um, to look back and realize you, you, you do have the qualifications to do that and that you, you are good enough. And I'm not just talking about uh, writers, there's many, many uh, professions out there where people would struggle or could struggle with um, imposter syndrome. Absolutely, thank you so much for putting that out. Um, so like you, like you said about um, imposter syndrome is one of the things majorly writers face. You know, like you said, I'm not good enough and stuff like that. Just know that you're good enough and don't re really listen to what people are saying about you. Yeah. But I do agree that listening to critics is sometimes good Mm -hmm. feedbacks that's sometimes good but be mindful in the kind of critics you're listening to so thank you so much for sharing that with us so we have two more questions to go Sandra mm -hmm. you've been an amazing amazing guest speaker mm. thank you Ransom so how do you mm. number six question is kind of like tricky Are you ready for that question yeah all right, how do you balance your many roles, you know, and responsibilities as a pharmacist, a writer, and an artist all together while taking care of your mental health? Okay, well, I think um, for me, like, yes, I have a very busy schedule, and added to that, I'm a single mom of three boys. So that is a huge uh, responsibility that I have as well. But for me to try and balance all these different roles and, and still maintain a good mental health, um, you have to have boundaries in place. I think you have to be able to say, okay, this is my work time. I'm gonna work during this time. And then, and then I'm not gonna try and let that uh, problems from work go into my evening when I'm with my family. And also things like making time in the morning or whenever it suits uh, an individual to to exercise, to cook, cook and eat healthy, things like that. You can't um, underestimate how that helps you. So not just to focus fully on work because then you don't have a balance in your life. Mm. That's how I do it. I, I try to compartmentalize my day and also use um, time blocking. So I say, okay, these... These two hours, I'm going to focus on um, working on my marketing for my LinkedIn, on my medical writing. For these two hours in the afternoon, I'm going to paint. Uh, sometimes I'll have a couple of hours in the evening if my kids are working where I would maybe do something um, on Instagram or something like that. So there's all different things to do, but you just have to realize you, you can't do it all at once. And also another good, another thing that's very important for everyone is that you need enough sleep and you need enough uh, downtime and time to socialize and be with friends and family. It's very important that. Very important, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that, Sandra. Yes. Um, so the last question. Mm. What mm -hmm. advice do you have for those who wants to use their art skills as a tool for mental health awareness and empowerment? So tell us. Well, I would encourage people if they um, if they feel like they want to get in, get into art, just to give it a go, to get yourself a few uh, affordable uh, paints, brushes, whatever you want. Canvas can be paper. There's so many uh, free videos on YouTube where you can um, just start and um, <clears throat> improve your skills as you go along, but just enjoy the process of it. Um, I think it's, it's really good for mindfulness and for um, taking your mind off of other challenges in your life. And I think um, just give it a go. But also if, if art isn't your um, area that you feel passionate about, whatever area in the creative field that you feel that you would uh, benefit from having as a hobby, 
just just give it a go. And if, if you're not interested in that, even just viewing art or attending a concert or attending something where you're a viewer, um, just try it and see how you feel. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sandra. We've, we've come to the end of the session and um, Sandra is a very busy person, you know, and she, her taking the time to come up as a guest speaker, we should honor had time because time is really very important. So thank you so much, Sandra. And I believe that the audience really greatly appreciates you. So if you love this content, do well to subscribe, like and comment and share to your network as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Ransom. Bye.